2019 promises to be an exciting year for the Eagles secondary. They are loaded with young talent at cornerback and perhaps more so than they know what to do with. Which leads us to take a much closer look at the game film of Jalen Mills, a player who every Eagles fan will have an opinion on. Whether it be good or whether it be bad, it is one extreme or the other. He is either loved or hated. But he is now entering his fourth year in Philadelphia, his contract year if you will. And through the opening three years of his career, one can argue that development isn't exactly the word you'd associate closely with his play so far. With talents like Avante Maddox, Sidney Jones and Razul Douglas all breathing down the neck of the Green Goblin who has missed OTAs due to rehabbing the injury that ended his 2018 campaign, it's safe to say he may be on the hot seat. But will he be the starter in 2019? Should he move to another area of the secondary? Or was 2018 the equivalent of Spider-Man 2 for the Green Goblin? That is what we're here to answer guys in another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, make sure you leave a like and hit subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content. We want to build the biggest base of Philadelphia sports fans possible and we need your help to do it. And don't forget to drop your opinions on Jalen Mills down in the comments below as well. And of course, check out phillysportsnetwork.com every single day for content from myself and all of our writers on your favourite Philadelphia sports teams. Let's start off with what Mills actually does well. And believe it or not, I think he's got a very high football IQ. This play against Tennessee is an intriguing one. While he doesn't actually come down with a tackle or an interception, he recognises and adjusts. Now, what we're going to see here is a cover one robber, which means that the single high safety is going to come down and try and take away that crossing route over the middle of the field. And on the opposite side, Jalen Mills notices that the wide receiver on his end of the spectrum is going to orbit round to the other side of the field. Now, the minute he sees this, he realises if that safety comes down. The middle of the field is just a wide open hole for Mariota to drop a ball into. So the second that receiver orbits, the hand of Jalen Mills goes up. He's seen this before. He signals to Ronald Darby to come over, who immediately starts pressing towards the inside of the field due to nature of the route. And then Mills comes up for support just in case Darby couldn't get there in time. And while again, Jalen Mills wasn't a significant impact on that play, if he wasn't there or didn't make that signal, this could have gone a different way. Now this play is interesting because it happened two times in the same drive. This is the first of those two plays. Jalen Mills playing outside. It's quarters coverage and this is arguably one of the better plays to use to beat it. You've got a post coming over the middle, a nice out route which should split the corners and then give you a nice open lane over the top of that defense. Mills is in off coverage, starts his back pedal and does so vertically thinking it's just a nine route and of course by doing that opens up a massive pane of glass inside and that's an easy catch for Sterling Shepard. Let's fast forward just two plays later. The Giants run it again and watch the back pedal of Mills here. He's seen this before. He starts angling himself inside this time just in case he gets burnt again and that is so much better. We talk about a one play mentality with cornerbacks. It doesn't get much more refined than that. Here's another example of that awareness. The Colts here are running a kind of levels concept they really want to take out and put the pressure on that single safety over the middle and what Jalen Mills, all he has to do here is funnel that play inside towards the safety. He doesn't want to let it out. So he shades off the outside of the field he keeps his shoulder square to the receiver, angles himself out and just funnels it perfectly to the safety you know, and helps on the way. Andrew Luck looks that direction, can't get the ball out because Mills is there long enough for the pressure to get in his face beautiful stuff. You see another example of this shading I'm talking about here. If you watch the positioning, the upper body of Jalen Mills where the shoulders are pointing towards, the Titans are operating out of a tight split so you want to again take away the outside of the field. Now this should be a double move. This is one of the rare instances Jalen Mills actually jumps a route, almost comes off with a play. Beggars can't be choosers. But it's a strong play and it is again one of the few times that we see this from Jalen Mills and that kind of brings us onto the next point. One that unfortunately stems the entire video. Yes, he's effective in the red zone. He had more passes defense than any other corner when inside the 20. He also had 107.2 passer rating when targeted, was the lowest graded corner according to PFF in 2016 and only 112th in 2018. So why is that? Mills is physical as you can see from the clips on tape. He's aggressive. That's why fans love him. He hits hard, he hits often and he's a real big character guy. Now that would be fine if you had the physical and athletic traits to back it up but Jalen Mills doesn't. He doesn't have the deep 
speed, size isn't always on his side. And although he can make fantastic open field tackles like that, the reason he's so good in the red zone is that there's so much less real estate to defend. He's only got, what, a maximum of 20 yards. He can't get turned around or beaten by a double team or exploited. The play's in front of him, and that's where Mills is strongest. Look at this. This is Eric Ebron in week three against the Colts. Ebron is a monster. But Mills can put his hands on Ebron and be aggressive because if he loses any momentum or does get beaten early on, within a couple of seconds, he's back in the picture again. There's nothing he can do unless there is a harrowing error that's going to get him out of that picture and open up Ebron for a touchdown. Which brings us to why don't the Eagles play Mills closer to the line of scrimmage? Well, from that same game, here he is lined up against T.Y. Hilton. What I want to look at first is how he's lined up. You can see there's barely any bend in the knees. His back is so hunched over. Compare that to Jones. He's a bit shorter. Compare it to Derby. There is significant more bend ready to explode out. Mills doesn't have that, so he ends up having to almost crouch his way. It's so subtle, but it makes a difference. Then he doesn't get a hand on the receiver and then gets grabby further down the route because he doesn't have anything to disrupt it. He doesn't have the speed to catch up with some of the faster receivers in the league, which means if he can't disrupt the timing early on, he's immediately at a disadvantage and has to put his hands on and open up to penalties. The other downside of not putting hands on receivers and pressing is this. That is the easiest reception in the world if somehow the receiver could get the ball. I don't know how he didn't come down with a catch there, but he just sells the out route, forced Jalen Mills to turn, and then cuts back inside for the slant. It doesn't get much simpler than that. If you're given leverage, if you know the corner isn't going to press you, why wouldn't you attack it? In a rare instance, he did against the Vikings. Like That was perfect coverage. That was probably one of the better plays I saw Jalen Mills make in 2018. Watch it again. The difference between the clip we just saw and this. He still doesn't put the hands on, but the minute he breaks, he does. There's a bit of a stumble by the receiver, admittedly, but it's a step forward. It's a bit better. He's got to do that consistently because, frankly, he doesn't. Eagles are in a cover one robber here. And what we're going to see is Malcolm Jenkins storm down to that right-hand side of the field in order to take it away. This is going to leave Jalen Mills on an island. And what we see out of press coverage is frankly bitterly disappointing. Again, there's no contact. Mills does put his hand on late but ends up facing completely horizontal. The receiver breaks open. That should have been a wide open pass for a huge gain. But it's Eli Manning throwing the football. So let's ease up some expectations here. But just slow this down. Watch it one more time. Mills steps inside. He's facing horizontal horizontally it's a slow burning double move we see it over and over again so what do you do with Jalen Mills if you're Jim Schwartz because if you put him close to the line of scrimmage he can play well there are flashes like this against Adam Thielen where although he doesn't get contact on the receiver he stays disciplined doesn't fall for the little stutter angles himself well and then takes away that vertical route but those plays were few and far between if you line him up in off coverage it's cheap yards all day long and this is why Jalen Mills is always near the top of the team when it comes to tackles. There's no other reason. And then you line him up against a craftsman like Julio Jones, who's just going to simply run a stick and knob route here. And Jalen Mills goes off. He ends up bailing to begin with. And the minute Julio turns around, Mills goes all in, puts all his chips on the table. Somehow this is a drop. I still don't think it was to this day. But it's a bad play by Jalen Mills. Here's another one from Adam Thielen. Just a nice double move. Nothing Mills can do. Because he's so reactive, but doesn't have the physical traits to make up for the loss of gambles. Plays like this against the Vikings happen over and over and over again because there's just nothing he can do if he commits to a move early. So we see he's already facing horizontally. The receiver just blows by. Mills doesn't have the acceleration or the speed to keep up and it's just an easy completion. Double moves are said to be the bane of Jalen Mills' his playing style and I agree but how do you beat them? If you press him he doesn't make contact. They happen. They gain leverage. If you put him on off coverage you see plays like this where he just over commits over sells. We'll rewind it back and have a look. He literally leaps out of his stance and starts bursting downhill where there's no real reason to. It's a simple stutter from Adam Thielen. Like, fair enough, I understand the hesitation here, but you've got to be respectful of that deeper route. Mills isn't. He gets burned alive here, and that's a huge play. Credit to his hustle for coming back and making the tackle. It didn't happen all the time. There were plays like this where he didn't fall for the double move, but he bit on it anyway. Just enough to open up that leverage for Julio Jones. Rewind it and watch it again. Now, it's a simple step here that Julio Julio Jones makes and it forces Mills out of his position just a little bit creates that momentum I don't know where you can put Jalen Mills again if you line him up close to the line of scrimmage he's not physical or aggressive enough because he can get beat if it doesn't go his way if he's in off coverage plays like that happen 
all the time. The answer some may say is moving him to safety, but even then, is he going to be a schematic fit at safety? Is he going to be asked to go laterally sideline to sideline to come down and make plays in the run? That's where someone who's a bit more explosive like Avante Maddox comes in. Now, I did want to show this play because I don't think that everything was Jalen Mills' fault in 2018, as many painted it out to be. What we're going to see here is a cover two variation. The Titans tried to attack deep down the field, and Mills is left all on his own to try and make a play. It's a suicide move, essentially, but why did that happen? Is that on Jalen Mills, who actually played the coverage as well as he could? It's actually on Ronald Darby, because if you look at this point, the corner should have 50% of the field each. Darby knows there is no one going his way, but he stays so far away from the action, he's then got all that ground to make up, and somehow that falls on Jalen Mills' shoulders. It should have fallen on the shoulders of Ronald Darby. But if you are Jim Schwartz, what do you actually do with Jalen Mills? You've got guys like Avante Maddox, Sidney Jones, and Rasul Douglas, all of whom arguably have higher ceilings, and all of whom are contracted to the team beyond next year. Is Jalen Mills potentially potentially going to be an off-season casualty. You can certainly make the case given that he missed OTAs and lost a lot of momentum. The wind has been knocked out of his sails by those younger, hungrier cornerbacks. It's going to take a very strong training camp for the Eagles now to not only keep Jalen Mills in that starting spot, but maybe his whole roster spot altogether given how much they need depth on the defensive line and at linebacker. But it's all up for discussion. Mills has a big ladder to climb now. The pressure is certainly on. But what do you think, guys? Let me know down in the comments. Has this video shown you anything new, anything you didn't know, or do you disagree completely? You can follow me on Twitter at Liam Jenkins PSN. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I'll see you next time.